you know what this year's Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to? Almost. Yeah, exactly. So it was awarded to the pioneering developments in the field of quantum information sciences, more specifically to the discovery and realization of something known as Bell's inequality. Bell's inequality for the very first time showed that the set of quantum correlations is intrinsically bigger than the set of classical correlations. To understand what that means, let's take an example. Suppose I have two coins and I flip them and I get heads or tails on either of them. But by looking at one, I can never predict whether the other coin would be heads or tails because they're completely random. Now, however, if I glued these two coins on a stick and then if I flip one, the other flips two. And by looking at one coin, I can always predict the outcome of the other. And that is because now these two coins are perfectly correlated. And what enables this correlation is the stick they are glued to. Without the stick, they're just two uncorrelated coins which are completely random. However, if these two coins instead were quantum particles and you inspected them and they look completely random and you see that they're not glued to each other through a stick, they are not connected through any hardware or software whatsoever, they could still be correlated with each other in a way that cannot be explained by classical physics. And if you measured one, you would be able to instantaneously predict the outcome of the other, even if these two coins were at two different edges of the universe. This happens due to something known as quantum entanglement. And Bell's inequality showed its existence for the very first time. And it is using principles from this that essentially allows us to do way more than what our current technologies enable. And this is the core of what makes quantum technologies so promising. And it is using principles from this idea that we hope to develop quantum computers that would essentially significantly outperform any computers that we have today for specific tasks. And I'm sure most of you must have heard the word quantum computer somewhere or the other. Well, before we delve deeper into its promised potential, let me digress a little bit and share a very interesting story. In 2017, a fancy restaurant opened in Dulwich, London. Uh, it was called The Shed at Dulwich and uh, it became really popular very, very soon. Uh, people had to call in months in advance to get a reservation at the restaurant. And, uh, in no time, it became the top-rated restaurant in TripAdvisor. And mind you, this was no small feat, for a city like London is famous for its boutique, fancy, Michelin-star restaurants. However, there was one small problem, that this restaurant didn't really exist at all. This whole thing was an experiment by a journalist to show the power of hype. And people who had essentially never been to that restaurant were writing glorious reviews of how amazing the food and ambience was. Uh, in fact, there was even a one-star review, possibly from a disgruntled rival. And the story gets even more interesting. So as the next step, uh, the journalist blindfolded 10 of those customers and uh, invited them into his backyard, where he served them with cheap, store-bought, ready-to-eat meals. And then, upon asking for reviews, uh, they said that they had absolutely loved the food and would love to come back again. So this is the power of hype. I'm sure some of, uh, some of you must be wondering, what does the story have to do with quantum technologies or its promised potential? Well, this incident went on to inspire the Dulwich Awards in the quantum information community to describe the mad hype that currently exists about the space, even though we don't really have as much to show for it yet. And uh, 
So let's look at some of those outlandish claims. Here, the IBM quantum computer is tasked with tackling cancer research, where they want to create customized treatments for cancer patients in Europe or using our IBM quantum computer, or this one which claims that a quantum computer could have predicted the victory of Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton in 2016. I think this article probably is to get more political funding in this space. Anyways, and this one, uh, the plethora of articles claiming how quantum computer is going to solve the climate change crisis and save humanity. In fact, there are entire conferences being organized on this topic. And yet, the reality though is that at present, we don't even have a deterministic timeline of when a quantum computer would be able to do a single useful task that our current computers cannot. And it isn't like the hype is in the media space alone. Governments across the world are pumping in huge sums of money into the space. It's almost like a new space race and corporations are making some of their largest investments ever. If you look at this graph, for example, you can see the rise in investments that has happened in quantum computing startups. And the last five years show the growth that has happened. It's almost exponential. And this does not even include huge investments by mega corporations like Google, IBM, Honeywell, Microsoft, and more, who are each pouring in millions and billions of dollars into the space through their own research facility. So why are these incredibly smart minds across the world pouring in so much money, time, and resource into something that is clearly so hyped up and does not even have a deterministic timeline of development? The answer is simply that even if these promises hold a fraction of truth, the right IPs would be immensely valuable. For countries and governments, it would mean a generational leap in technology and the corresponding economic and political might. For companies, it would mean dominance in the technology of the future. It's very much like the early days of computer development where a computer would occupy a huge room. Uh, it, wouldn't be, it wasn't able to do anything that a smart person with a pen and paper could not. And uh, we definitely would not have imagined back then that we would be carrying them in the back pockets today. Similarly, our quantum computers today look something like this. So while this Google Syncamore quantum computer looks really magnificent, Unfortunately, it cannot do anything more than what our classic computers can. So that being said, these investments have definitely done some good, apart from just being a bet on the future potential of this technology, it has allowed us to propel research in the field and significantly accelerate the timeline of research and development. But it is specifically in times like these that one needs to be even more careful of the claims being made, as otherwise it does way more harm than the good the hype does by generating interest. It sometimes encourages dishonest science. It puts undue pressure on scientists and researchers across the world, uh, which leads them to sometimes oversell or overstate the results, which is extremely detrimental to the progress in the field. Uh, and a lot of quantum computing startups um, seem to have untenable timelines and are competing with each other in boldest claims being made rather than technological development. And a lot of non-quantum startups seem to believe that quantum is a cool word that can be added to their startup to make it more lucrative to investors. Well, all of this is really detrimental to the field. And that is why scientists across the world are now trying to speak out against this hype with my own advisor being one such scientist who's very vocal about this. So now that we've established that uh, even with all of this hype, there is definitely some real potential in the field, uh, what is the role or what is the space ahead for people like you and me with mega corporations pouring so much money? Is there any space left for new ideas and entrepreneurship? 
Uh, to that, I would say definitely yes. In fact, we've hardly explored the possibilities. One area that I feel is much less saturated and way less talked about in news media and you know, covered are the non-computing quantum technologies. So I would ask you to look beyond just quantum computers and find out more about these constituent quantum technologies that have their own standalone applications and their development would eventually contribute to the development of a quantum computer or lead to the quantum revolution as they say. Um, so as an example um, would be quantum sensors. So quantum sensors use the same principles of physics that we talked about in the initial part of the talk. And uh, what they do is they measure quantities like gravity, electromagnetic field, way more precisely. And this alone has a lot of interesting applications. A more precise gravimeter would help us with weather research, oil, gas, water, mineral exploration. Uh, precise quantum, quantum magnetometer would help us with diagnostics, brain imaging, brain research, human computer interface, and more. Uh, another area of development which is truly exciting to me are these quantum APNT systems where you'd have a quantum clock, a quantum gyroscope, accelerometer, which would allow us for GPS-free navigation. Then there are these technologies called quantum dots, whose high luminescence and narrow line width make them perfect candidates for biosensing, diagnostics, imaging, and even a very good candidate for our future display technology. So all of this have some form of proof of concept already shown in the lab. They're much more near term and have a direct path to commercialization. That being said, of course, there's more R&D required and a lot more development that would go into it, but they are much more near term than the quantum revolution or quantum computing revolution that we talk about. And a development in these technologies would directly contribute to the development of a quantum computer. Because after all, it was the development of IC that led to modern computing revolution. So what I would want you to take away is that this is a really exciting field that is just starting to develop. And we would love for more young and brilliant minds like you all to get involved. However, as you do so, make sure that you don't fall for the hype and also to maybe look beyond just quantum computing and explore a lot of other possibilities that exist in the space and look beyond what the tabloids claim. Thank you so much.